Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, we're going to take a look at my introductory shtick to how to play jazz drums. By that, I mean how to play swing bass stuff. That's the kind of stereotypical jazz thing we think about. Obviously, the whole topic is kind of broader than that, but we're gonna look at how to get into the swing. Um, it's very often something that, that you could get the impression is only accessible to the most technically adept, artistic, eight hours a day practicing type of people with all the chops and all of that. But actually, it's not that complicated to get into. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it, it'll help your playing in lots of different ways to explore something a little bit different. Or if you just love this music and you want to play it, you can become a half-decent jazz player if you want. It, it's accessible to us ordinary people. Okay, let me play a little bit of swing for you and then we'll get on with the meat of the matter. I made that, it's good, isn't it? Anyway, that's it, a little bit of swing there. Oh, I need to market myself, I'm terrible at that, aren't I? I keep forgetting, no, now I remembered. Before I go on, I'd like you to bear in mind that I am a drum teacher, obviously, and I'm based in Northwest London, but if you're anywhere in the world and you feel like I, you like my patter and whatever, and uh, you think I might be able to help you out with your drumming and would benefit for some one-on-one -on -one lessons, get in touch with me. The details are in the description box below and I can offer you lessons like with Skype or Zoom or whatever you like and um, see if I can help you out in some way to progress your drumming. Uh, otherwise, if you fancy uh, making a little contribution to the effort, I've got a Buy Me A Coffee account as well. So also the link is below. Uh, chuck me a couple of quid so I can buy well, a pint, to be honest. Um, Anyway, marketing done. Let's get into the meat of the matter. First thing to bear in mind is, especially if you've been playing rock and pop drums, you'll be used to making your kind of rhythmic statement, mostly with the bass drum and the snare. Those are the upfront voices when we're playing rock and pop music most of the time. And um, the hi-hat or the, the ride cymbal will be kind of a bit more subdued in the sonic picture. With jazz, everything is led by, well, swing anyway, everything is led by the cymbal, right? So we're, we're either playing the ride or the hi-hat, and we're playing the whole dang, dang, a dang pattern and the variants thereof. Um, and that's going to be the dominant sound. I mean, it, it sort of said you could turn up to a gig with just your ride cymbal, and if you've got a decent sense of swing, that will suffice. So, you know, if you're brave enough to do that, <laughs> go ahead. But anyway, you get the idea. You're supposed to really, really focus on that as your main rhythmic impulse, uh, and then you're gonna add the, the snare and the bass as textural elements that are gonna add to the, the melodic sound that you make, but the, the real rhythm is coming from the ride cymbal or the hi-hat primarily. So let's get stuck into that. First things first, uh, I'm a big fan, as if you've seen any of my videos, I'm a big fan of verbalizing. And it's a good idea to sort of internalize the swing pattern by singing it. Uh, I. I tend to prefer going dang, dang, ga 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 dang. But there's also things like spang, spang, alang, which is kind of the same thing. Walk the dog, walk the dog from Mr. Hutchinson. I've, I've heard that. Um, five, fifty-five, fifty-five. But get into singing it first and get the feeling of a nice swing. Dang, dang, ga 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 dang, dang, ga. Next, we're going to focus on the two elements of this. We've got dang 
and Gadang. We're going to focus on those a little bit separately because the Gadang is the clever bit. And I'm, I was debating with myself whether I'm going to go into this from a, a perspective of like the, the sort of mechanical aspect of what I'm doing. Uh, and I thought, yes, why not? Why not drive everybody potty with that? Uh, I learned this particular approach from a beautiful gentleman called Ralph Salmins. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our Gadang and we're going to get two for the price of one. What used to be known um, as a single stroke rebound, where we throw the stick down once, maybe it's still known, as, if you know it as that, um, let me know. But I saw that, that referred to like by elderlies like Murray Spivak and olden days people like that. But anyway, single stroke rebound, I'm going to throw my stick down and I'm going to get two sounds from one hand movement. That will be my gadang. And that's the thing we're going to start with. And you're going to try and get two even sounds as much as possible. Obviously, you're throwing the stick down and relying on the laws of physics to, pr to produce the two sounds, but work at it until you can get as even as possible two sounds. Gadang. It takes more than 30 seconds to get the hang of it if you've never done it before, but have a go with that. Now, you can sing the pattern again, dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, and then get those single stroke rebounds to happen. Dang, dang. Once we can do that, it means that we only have to really play two strokes to get our swing. And so it can be a really efficient way to get a nice cooking feel going. All I have is um, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Dang, dang. And take as much time as you like over that. That's what it's all about. Now, dang, dang, a dang. We're going to add the hi-hat foot on the individual dang. Dang, dang, ga 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 dang, and so on and so on. I recommend, or do I recommend? Yes, I sort of recommend. The, the, the contemporary way of doing this is to get a nice sharp chick sound from the hi-hat by playing heel up, raising up your heel basically, and then dropping a whole leg down using gravity to help you. Um, so that's kind of a good way to approach it, or that would be the standard way to do it these days, but not everybody feels comfortable with that, so I wouldn't get too bogged down into that aspect of things. And if you feel more comfortable playing heel down, meaning you're just gonna raise the front of your foot to play the hi-hat, uh, that's absolutely fine. What I would recommend, though, in that case, is learning how to kind of roll the front of your foot forward into the stroke to get as much crispiness as possible. I'll, I'll play heel up a little bit and then heel down. So heel up. And then heel down. Gives you a little bit of a different sound, okay? So we're gonna put that on the dang. Dang, go dang. I don't want to do it that way around. I'm going to play the cymbal first and then I'm going to add the hi hat. Dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang.
And that's the essence of that, really. Now, once we can do that reasonably comfortably, you know, you can hear that whole nice swing sound and hopefully you can get it going so that it feels rhythmically good to you. Um, we want to bring our attention to the quarter notes to know where the one, two, three, and four are. And in this case, when we're dang, dang, a danging, it's on the various dangs. So we've got dang, dang, a 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 dang, dang. Okay, so let's play that again, and we can count one, two, three, four along with it to get a little bit of a sense of those quarters. And then um, let's see, two, three, four. To help you along with that, obviously counting the quarter notes is a good idea. You could stick a metronome on as well, a sort of moderate tempo, uh, starting like a very slow swing is about 80 BPM. To practice something like this, maybe at 100, something like that isn't bad, or 80 to 100, whatever feels right. But put a click on it and really see that you can nail those quarter notes with the little bouncy stroke there. Now, the last little component of this is we're going to add the bass drum on the one, two, three, and four. And this is something that's famously known as feathering. And actually, it's not something that, that's de rigueur to, to, to playing modern swing music even. You don't have to play uh, this feathering thing. So I would say it's um, an optional uh, aspect of this. So you could always think, oh, I'm not gonna bother with that right now. Come, to, come back to it another time. The main swingy thing is what you wanna get the hang of. But, uh, I sort of recommend it. So it's a good idea to at least be able to do it. It helps you kind of consolidate your timing and again, connect to that all important quarter note, the nice pulse that you're going to link in with, uh, you know, like with the bass line, with the walking bass or whatever. Now, the trick here, the reason it's called feathering is because you're meant to play the bass really, really softly. And uh, I'm not really sure how uh, softly or loudly it's gonna be heard in the recording, obviously, because there's microphones and things happening, but you're gonna play like a, a really small little boink of the, the bass drum head with the pedal. And uh, by and large, you'd wanna do this with your heel down. And it's just like a, a little gentle movement of the foot, but it's not so easy to do if you haven't done it before. So I'm gonna play a little bit and I, I don't know, I don't know how loud, as I said, it's gonna be. So it might be kind of a silly demonstration, but I'm just gonna play the bass uh, on its own a little bit and um, do a nice little, Ooh, pardon me, a little feathering thing. <coughs> oh God. Now with the, um, the swing added in, we're gonna go right cymbal, add the hi-hat foot, and then we're gonna add the quarters on the bass drum to create the whole picture. And that's that. If you could hear me feathering the bass, well, <laughs> I've done it all wrong. <laughs> so it should be really, really soft. You should only be able to feel it, but obviously I want you to be able to hear it because otherwise you might think I'm cheating. But if you can't hear it, I might be cheating, but I might also be a feathering genius, but let's see how it comes out. Um, and, and that's it. That's the essence of your introduction to playing jazz, playing the swing. And once you've 
got that feeling reasonably good, stick Freddie Freeloader on or any other sort of reasonably comfortable swinging track and just play the cymbal, the hi-hat and the bass, if you like, along to the track and just get into the feel of it. In the next few videos, as I said, we're going to add some snare and bass comping patterns, the little melodic statements that we, we can make to, to add something to our swing. Just to give you, a, you know, whet your appetite a little bit, it'll be something like this. So there you go, enjoy. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this, whether I explained it well enough, and if you had a go, how did you get on? Did you enjoy it? Did it feel good? There are lots of other techniques that you could apply, or well, a few anyway, to playing. Uh, you don't have to follow this one necessarily, but that, that's my little introduction. Thank you very much for watching this. I do appreciate it. Remember to give me a like and all that stuff. Subscribe, I think I said all that earlier on. Uh, you can go off and practice now. <laughs>